You know, I, I think I can safely say that both Locke and I like to pack lightly. We don't want to carry too much kit no. because we're not the strongest, most musliest of people. So everything is practically in this bag. But today is a little bit different. Uh, Viltrox. Last time I reviewed this lens and I quite like it. It's pretty good actually, 18 millimeter, And it is actually, I have to end it actually because I'm a bit of a snob. I was thinking that just looking at it, I thought, oh, no, no, look at that. <laughs> Who designed that? It was the accountant that designed that. Look past the looks and you'll find that it's a really good lens, actually. And just a quick sponsored shout out to Adorama, affiliate link partner of this channel. For the Viltrox 16mm lens and much, much more gear for creators, please do use the links in the description below to help support this channel. And it's affordable. But today we've got another Viltrox, three Viltroxes, in here. <laughs> And this is why I'm holding a matte box, by the way. I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, oh, carbon fiber as well, just to save some extra grams because all the grams are in here. This hefty case is best weighed in kilograms. What you'll find inside is, as Viltrox call it, they're epic lenses. And you know what? I wouldn't argue with that moniker. Whoa. <laughs> it's like some lenses for Lhasa or something. <laughs> Oh, oh no, no. It's like if you steal the pearls, you will be punished. No, stop it. Stop. So what have we got? We've got 50. What what is for? Oh, that's uh, just to get to our destination. We, I beat up some kids and stole their scooters. That's what we're going to use. So anyway, we've got 50, 75 and 35. Ooh. All T2, 1.33 times full frame. So you can get them in a variety of different mounts. I've gone for the least popular because it was easier to get. Lots easier to sell though. Yeah, that's, well, I, I don't get to keep to these. I don't get to keep these. Oh, oh shit. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. So we've got tripod, a uh, quarter, quarter inch, three eighths. Instruction manual. And of course the lens itself. You will never have. be able to have Mr. Handsman's videos to laugh at now. But you've got these anyway. It's for some geeky it's for stuff. Some oh, gold screwy thing. Okay, now I'll start unboxing. Oh, it's still in the box. Oof. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh dear. Could have ended Thousand, in tears. Uh, yeah. Thousands worth. I don't know how much are they. It, Roll down <laughs> <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Durability test. Rolling down the hill. <laughs> you should do it. See how, see how far you can roll it. <laughs> Would you like to see a new durability test? Leave a comment down below. We don't read the comments anyway. Okay, well, now we're ready to go. Oh, Christ, for a nice walk. Look at that magnificence. Oh, look, look at all those colors. Yes, green, gray, and brown. Oh, f <laughs> I mean, you can tell we're proper city people. Uh, oh, 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 shit. <laughs> Off. Nature. Off. Well, you lot's got suede shoes, so. He's got a lot more to lose than me. Maybe it's better that I'm not holding three cinema lenses. <laughs> so here, isn't it? There it is. I think this bit looks less muddy well, here. We, we walk all the way for that thing. Were well, you disappointed? Yeah. <laughs> There is a reason why that case is pretty weighty. Each lens weighs a smidgen under two kilograms. They're available in PL mount, but also Sony E and Panasonic L mount, which is nice. It's just that they end up looking and feeling very front heavy when mounted on a mirrorless camera. Awesome. A little test scene here. DP Review's got a little studio test scene, if, if they're still doing that. We've got a uh, giant, whatever that is, orange peel. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty good for photography, this tripod. But I think for those lenses, it might be a bit puny. Okay, what should we, let's, let's try 35 first. Woof. Woof, it, it does need a big woof indeed. Okay, so there we are. Look at that. It's like a stormtrooper of a lens. That's what they should have called it, TM. Yeah, so the matte box is because 
One of those reasons being that these lenses don't have filter threads, just a 95mm front end to clamp a matte box onto. And of course, a matte box is primarily for just looking good, isn't it? It's like, yeah, look, look how professional I am. I've got a matte box. Anamorphic de squeeze display 1.33 times. These are full frame lenses, so perhaps that is why they are freaking massive. Even this is not big enough lock, quite annoyingly. You can I'm getting softening in the corners. As you can see, it's showing it the, the edge of the filter. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Maybe holding it is fine. It's quite amazing though. I mean, I was quite surprised that Viltrox make that other lens. And this, it's like opposite ends of the spectrum. Not that that's bad in terms of the quality. It's solid enough. It's just that it doesn't look like much thought was put into the designing of it. This is quite impressive. That's wide open at T2. They're all T2 lenses. What, what is T2? T-stop is an actual proper reliable rating. F-stop is just fancy marketing talk. <laughs> In a way. In a way. Yeah. Also, F-stop is just the diameter. They're all T2 and they all share the same dimensions and weight. It's an OCD light. I don't see too much of that anamorphic flare. It's not like crazy, it's there. But as I said in the previous video, I, I, I'm starting to go away from that. When I first tried anamorphic lenses, I thought, yeah, that looks cool. From one side of the screen to the other. Now I like it a bit more subtler. Yeah. It's just overdone sometimes. It's overdone for quite some time already. <laughs> or oh, the JJ Al album. <laughs> JJ album. <laughs> Yeah. Start from those J. Star Trek movies, J.J. Album. <laughs> I don't think it's, that's his name, is it? Oh, Star Trek, it's a spaceship. Oh, oh, Klingon. It's at T2, so we should get a bit of shallow depth of field. Look at that, um, but it's 1.33 times. It probably won't be that stretched. The 35 produces some bokeh ovals, not elongated as I guessed. But if you want that, then you need a 1.6 times or more. Okay, maybe time to swap the lens. Oh, Christ. Why? Why? I should have just brought one instead of the whole case. Inserting in the membrane. Inserting in the brain. It might just work with this one. Because it's a little bit tighter than 34, and I don't want to call like that. Okay, let's go on. Give that go, man. Kind of in focus. That's fine. It's anamorphic, it's, it's all relatively sharp anyway. Sharp slash soft as hell. Actually, it is a brand that makes me say actually. It's not too soft wide open. It's not hard edge sharp, but it strikes a fine balance between sharp and soft. Whereas the Lara Nanomorphs I tried out last time were as soft as baby poo. It's, uh, let's see what the flaring is like on the 15mm. It's also T2, oh you can see it? Yeah, not, yeah not, a little bit. Locke's nodding his head, so it's all good. So this will give you an idea of the bokeh. I don't think it's as wild as some other anamorphic lenses. It looks quite normal. It looks, I think everything looks quite regular. If you took away the bright light, it wouldn't scream anamorphic look, but there's something about the image it produces, a certain charm or character that looks different to a regular photographic lens. It's very likable, and it doesn't have the wild distorted edges that you get with an anamorphic lens with a bigger stretch. Let's have a look at the flaring. Sometimes you get these... And last time I look at the nanomorphs, you can get some cool little rainbow... Rainbow flaring! And this one. Okay, anyway, that's a 15mm. It's like the 35, just enough sharpness, but not enough to make it too harsh to look at. The bokeh is certainly easy on the eyes. The centre bits are nice and soft, with the bokeh balls taking on more pronounced cat's eye shapes towards the edges. They do look more prominent towards the edges, but still blends away nicely. Really beautiful. Yep, so nice gearing. It's quite a nice, nicely made lens, actually. I, I don't know if really do... Yeah, pretty uh, smooth. Do professionals want a white lens? I think I saw somewhere in the comments on their website that they wish it was in black because it's a little bit distracting. Uh, you know, when you're filming and it's like, oh, okay, what's that white thing there? Maybe um, people worry about if you've got like reflection, it's um, easier to see yeah. a little bit. 
And it seems, looking on Viltrox's website, that the more eye-catchy appearance is not the preferred choice. Professionals, there's a lot more to consider than what we'd consider. Yeah, sometimes we don't know. So basically what we're saying is we're out of our depth, basically. <laughs> Come on, have more confidence in yourself. Put the matte box on, it'll make you look like you know what you're doing. Bro. Yeah, we're... <laughs> I... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A uh, lot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, no, it's all in the gearing. <laughs> anyway, on to the last lens, thankfully, before I turn my matte box into a muddy box. Focusing. Okay, animal foot flaring. There you go. JJ, oh, JJ Abrams. JJ oh. Album. <laughs> I mean, this is 75, so this is the tightest. So you should get more bokeh and perhaps more exaggerated, elongated bokeh if it does have any. But this is 1.33 times. In my experience, 1.33 times don't really give you as much of that stretchy looking bokeh but it does give you this flaring it, it doesn't look that crazy but as i said that's kind of what i like these days do it we'll try it handheld setting the focal length into the in-body stabilization system here we go and there's a lot to like about this trio of lenses. Optically, they produce some nice, visually pleasing images. Couldn't see any chromatic aberration. They're sharp enough, lovely bokeh. All of them low on lens breathing, but they're full frame anamorphics. And there's not much choice for affordable ones like that. Especially not if you're looking for 1.33 times, which I find myself liking a lot more. When I first tried anamorphics, I found myself wanting more stretch. But over time, for my use, I don't feel like I need to slip in some letterbox b-roll video in between my normal 16x9 stuff. So that's why I feel like a 1.33 times lens would get a lot more use with my work. If only they weren't so massive like. Anyway, let's, let's lug this back. Sick of it. Sick of these lenses already. Oh, they're great by the way. <laughs> I really love them. Quick sponsored shout out to Adorama. For all your photo gear needs, they have everything from cameras and lenses to lighting, computers and even gaming stuff. So please do click through in the links below to head on over to Adorama. Oh mate, this is ridiculous. Why do we have to park so far into the car park? There's, well, there's spaces oh, over there. But it... No, it was busier this morning. What? I you mean were, earlier. You arrived like a few minutes before me. You've yeah. got a weird porthole there. That's not you. <laughs> it looks like this looks like one knows. That's that's probably um speed camera. That's a, a... a pervy camera. <laughs> Christ. Christ on Shitting hell man. This is why professional photographers and, and video people have assistants. If we just worked a little bit harder, we could have got an assistant. I think uh, <laughs> yeah. We need to hire somebody to, to carry our bags. Oh, the digital rev days. Hopefully we can get there before my uh, arms are pulled out of their sockets. Oh man, hurry up traffic. I mean, this case is not the kind of case you'd carry around in the countryside, is it? It's not a very countryside kind of box. Actually, I don't even know if we're going the right way. Well, that's good. <laughs> There's something wrong with the screw or the key. Well, I guess this is fine. No lock, no. <laughs> Screw you. And you two. And the third one. It's, of course, it's a great time to be handling a white lens is when you've just started bleeding. Oh, oh. oh hang on, that's not very tight. <laughs> Look at that. Shoddy, shoddy, even, even the tripod. Just everything, everything's loose, man. What is wrong? Get loose. Yeah. Oh, that's a weird, especially if you've got dry skin like me. <laughs> like I'm just leaving a load of dry skin. I'm like a snake, I'm shedding my skin all over that lens. <laughs> and I'm gonna send this back. They'll probably, they'll probably use it in some lab and then clone me. Oh, I've got a problem screen this morning. What's wrong with me? Cold weather, that's what. Cold weather is never conducive for good screwing. 
action. Any kind of. Yes. Vill trucks do not make it easy for you to screw. Dot com. I need to be a little bit back. You can't see the sea, otherwise. <laughs> I don't mean the, 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 um, there's no sea here. We're inland. <laughs> yeah, you're all singing. What? <laughs> What's sea? That, that, that thing, it looks like a, a C shape, doesn't it? Oh. The letter C. <laughs> That, oh, uh, yeah, that's the, not, 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 not those not the, um, wet, wet sea. Yeah, not that one. 